Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to share with you the, uh, my experience when I did Jomia Trail. Um, when oh, I met quite a few people, hikers on the trail, and then when they know that I, I was 75 years old, and then most of them said, how inspiring. And that made me so happy. Oh, I'm doing something that inspired, which is inspiring for uh, the people I met. OK, uh, two and a, almost ha two and a half years ago, some of you uh, subscribe Sierra magazine. Uh, the magazine distributed among the uh, Sierra Club members. And there's an article. Here's the copy, not the magazine. Lighten up. And they, they list all the uh, through hikes. And I had been doing some memorable hikes after my retirement, at the age of 60, no more full-time work. I decided to enjoy my life in gardening and hiking. And um, in the Sierra Magazine, that's, uh, let's see, July-August issue, uh, 2010. And it's called Lighten Up. And let me read the uh, caption. Jettison the tent, the candle lantern, which I didn't carry. And that copy of Moby Dick, I didn't carry. That's an extra weight. <laughs> Ultralight through hiking takes you farther, faster. Just don't take it too far, by Daniel Duan. Um, but um, before this, my hike is based on the notion that it's very, very important to make your pack lighter. And as you see, I'm small, lightweight, uh, frail woman. So <laughs> uh, I, that's the main concern. And uh, some of you may know that uh, in 1980, or before that, there was a book called Complete Walker. And that was phenomenal to me. And the author weighed every item and chose the most lightest one or compare the function and the, the weight, and decide what to carry. And that's my base of uh, mountaineering, hiking, particularly if this is a long hike, 25 days uh, almost 200, huh? oh yeah, 220 miles. And uh, I was not quite sure before I started that I could finish it. So, uh, but in that Lighten Up, Lighten Up article, there's a list of America's most popular through hikes. So just one place, for example, in Yosemite National Park, uh, one time I climbed up Mount Lyell, the highest peak in Yos Yosemite National Park, and back. And the longest hike we did uh, was the 11-day hike in Tasmania, in Australia. So uh, when I read, the, read this, this article, I didn't, 
I didn't have any kind of confidence that I could finish. So uh, lots of planning. Uh, and um, when I had the retirement at the age of 60, I decided every uh, fifth year I wanted to do something memorable. So first, when I was 65, I went up a half dome in Yosemite National Park. And at the age of 70, I did, the, do you know the um, only wilderness hike in the Bay Area? He knows. Do you know the only wilderness hike in the Bay Area, which, is, which starts from Del Val and uh, went up to the highest peak, which is huh? Rose Peak. Yeah, which is Rose Peak, and down to Snow, and, and up to Mission Peak and down. That's the uh, only wilderness hike. So I did that at the age of 70. And after that, I started wondering, where shall I go? And then this one came. And here, in this article, there's a list of through hikes. The mothers, one, two, three. The babies, one, two, three. And the Continental Divide Trail, that's new, from New Mexico, the Mexican border, or US border, to the Canadian border. And that's 3,000 miles. Pacific Crest Trail, that's part of the Jomia Trail is 2,650. Appalachian Trail, 2,175. And the babies, Colorado Trail, almost 500. Jomia Trail, only 200 plus something. Long Trail, 272. And when I saw this, well, I may be able to do it. So this is the article uh, that made me start to do this. OK, so first thing, I bought a book. And I read the, uh, uh, someone, oh, what about the geolo geological information? Well, I just quick, quickly passed that area. The m main thing is which one, which side, from Yosemite Valley to the top of Mount Whitney, or, well, usually Whitney Portal here. Start from here, from the south to the north. And most people, oh, because PCT, uh, Pacific Crest Trail, runs more parallel, not parallel, they use the same trail to the north. And so um, more people do the Jomia Trail. So start from the north would be nicer. That's what this book said. Uh, not many people bother you. <laughs> well, I love every time I met someone, I said hi and I talk. Yeah. Uh, every time I, I, we had a pleasant talk. OK. So uh, when I saw this list through hikes, and Jomia Trail is the shortest, only 220 miles. <laughs> and I'm old, not, any, not 60 anymore, 75. Five. So, <laughs> so OK, uh, I'll try to do this. And so I, but people from, frowned upon me because that's too, too, what? Outrageous, too courageous. 
You don't know your age. You don't know your stamina. You don't know your speed or whatever. The most difficult thing is how to control your appetite. And if you need a lot to eat, that means you have to carry that weight, the whole weight. And so uh, I decided to do it, but look at any pointer? Have you? Stick. Stick, yes. Well, if I, it's easier. Some people ask, oh, that, uh, the whole, whole distance is 220. And then they tend to think just a gradual, <laughs> smooth trail. And oh, but uh, I made the, the graph here. Places where I pitched her tent. OK. Um, Red dots are the places where I pitched my tent and spent that night. And the highest point between one uh, last night's tent site and tonight, I, I put these. Oh, OK, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first thing is, uh, when I read that, you have to take a wilderness permit as soon as possible. And that means you need to fix the date to start and possible finishing date. And so I, I think quite, uh, uh, just a minute. <sighs> No, uh, quite a long time ago, uh, several months ago, I called the, the uh, park service. And when uh, I started the preparation almost in February, I think, so four to five months of preparation, preparation, that means I need endurance, certain type of endurance. And so I started uh, walking up Mission Peak at least once, once a week or once in two weeks. Uh, I, didn't, I, did, I hate exercise. So um, that's boring, right, uh, compared to hiking. And so I, I didn't do much. And here it says, um, Uh, let's see, ha starting point is Happy Isles Yosemite Valley, Num uh, exit trailhead Whitney Portal, Mount Whit top of Mount Whitney is here, and from there, how many, one, 6,000 feet drop to Whitney Portal. And so, <laughs> Uh, I, I got the wilderness permit. This is the wilderness permit. And I thought these days lots of people skip uh, regulations or something. But every time I met the ranger patrolling, they checked. OK, have you got the wilderness permit? Yes. <laughs> And, and so, definitely, you have to take the wilderness permit. And, <laughs> and so, uh, surprisingly, I could make it. Uh, oh, here, Yosemite Valley, and go up north, north to Torai Meadows, and then, and then down south. Uh, here is, you can have the campground. The next one is Pete Meadow. Uh, this is Vermilion uh, campground. And 
Ooh. Uh, somewhere else. One more. Hmm. Somewhere uh, around here, another campground. And what people do is divide into five or six trips. So one, one, one first one is from here to there. That means three or four days. And from here to here, uh, July 4th, and this is July 8th, I think so. And so almost one, one week, more than one week. And another one, another one was Jomia Wilderness, Kingsken, around here, the ranger station. So one, two, three, four, five. That's the uh, most people do that. Instead of uh, at one time, uh, average length of hiking is 24 days, I think so, in the book. And so I was not quite sure that I could do it, the whole thing at a time. And so uh, I planned, OK, oh, more important thing is you have to uh, deliver the supplies. And at re here, uh, the post office make a delivery to here. And so I, I sent one package here and another package somewhere here uh, before the, uh, oh yeah, here, Miatre Ranch. And so I started at the uh, Yosemite Valley with 10 days food. And here I supplied I used uh, the food, so another package with 10 days food, and another package around here, another 10 days food. So 30 days food were, were available, was available to make the whole trip. Um, okay, and then, uh, Bill gave me a lift to Merced, and I took a bus to Yosemite Valley, and that was July 1st. And then in Yosemite Valley, there was a backpacker's campground, and I spent the first night in Yosemite Valley at back, backpacker's campground, and then started uh, the trail. I already, oh, I already went to the went up to the half dome, so I, you know, didn't need to half dome. Go going up to half dome. Um, okay. The graph shows from mm, just a minute. Oh, twenty-five. Oh yeah. And came down on July 26th. So starting from 4,000, and this one 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, uh, this line is 12,000, this line is 15,000, so Mount Whitney is 14,000 and yeah, close to 15,000. So every day about First day, 2,000 feet climb, 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 climb down, climb, down, down, climb, almost two days down. So always quite a ups and downs yeah, during the whole trip. And what uh, I, looked, I, I looked like, the, this old, oh, I, it, well, I have one thing 
very memorable to me was that uh, when I came to California in 1984, I climbed um, no, oh, various mountains, but uh, one of them was Mount Lyell. And in a group, we started from Torai Meadows, and then there came a huge boulder, the rock wall, and then quite, quite high, and then the leader turned to me, Saiko, you can't come with us from here because you are so tiny. And so, uh, because, you know, leader's opinion should be, yeah, right. So I didn't resist. And so, okay. And so leader and that old tall guy and young and start looking, climb up that uh, huge boulder wall and disappeared. And then I, I thought, how can they say without watching me how to handle? So I, I tried to handle the huge boulders and I was at the top of the boulder. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, I kept climbing because I, have the, I had the leader, I didn't carry my own map. And so, and then the whole mountain was closed uh, by fog. And you know, you can't see the top of the mountain. And what I did was wait for the fog to thin out. And then uh, I saw the, the ridge is like this or like this. And so I felt, don't do that, please. <laughs> I did. And I followed and finally I reached the top of Mount Lyell. How, how high is it? 13,000? Oh, plus. What? 13,000 plus. 13, plus feet high mountain. Uh, close, no, not close. The bottom is almost 10 miles, no, eight miles from the Torah Meadows. And so I saw the ridge going up. So I took this way, and after a while, I wait for the fog to thin out. And then ridge go that way, on like this, that way. <laughs> and finally, I reached to the top. And there was, there, uh, there was a Japanese green tea can. Uh, you know, the long, long tea can. And so I opened it, and there was the, my trip leader's entry. And so I read the ent entry message, and I added my message and put, put it back, because that's the only evidence that I was there uh, with the date on. And so I came down and I came down to the place where my leader abandoned me. <laughs> and so I looked down and the, the leader was upset <laughs> because he was the one who left me. He was sort of responsible. <laughs> And I said, ah, I'm here. But in the mountains, human voice is so small. And so I, not, I, I couldn't run down, but I hurriedly uh, down the rock wall and um, caught up with that, with the leader. And went back to Torah Meadows where we camped on the previous night. And then, very unfortunately, it, it rarely happens, all my water, all my food, everything was gone. And Troy Meadows is a huge place, miles to get back to Troy Meadow, uh, what's that, park office? 
so, uh, and my leader had a problem because he didn't have a, why? Why didn't he have the uh, uh, water appearing tablets or I don't remember, but I had uh, the thief didn't take the my uh, fuel, fuel and and the pot, and so I I'll boil the water, and you have to drink the drink the water to get back to Torre Meadows. But I I I, I can walk. <laughs> he nev never but he he was we were successful to reach the. Uh, back to Torre Meadows, so it was okay. Where was I? Where, <laughs> where am I? Uh, anyway, so it's not flat, I have to tell you. Uh, <laughs> ups and downs and ups and downs uh, like this. For example, here, McClure Meadow is almost 8,000 and Muir Pass is 12,000. That means 4,000 feet uphill in one day. So uh, it's, it's not an easy hike. Anyway, okay, so, okay. How I'm prepared. This is this is not chronological, these are not in chronological order. This is the way I, I sort of prepared. White hat, okay. And I'm wearing rain pants, so it may have rained, rained or very cold. Um, and the, here's my pack. Oh, now you, you are looking at the picture. Uh, I want to point out this is one of the ranger station and the, this is the uh, uh, brand new one and when I scouted uh, almost uh, more than a year ago I met this ranger and the ranger station was being built and I wanted to, to see the uh, new ranger station. So I went there and the, this is a ranger. Uh, he welcomed me and I have something to give you. And then he took out the uh, uh, fresh orange because orange is heavy. Yeah. And so uh, I really appreciate it. And <laughs> When I finished eating the, the whole orange, three men party arrived, and so no orange f for them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this is not the chronological order. Probably it doesn't mean to you much. Uh, if you are, you are planning to do that, I will give you the detailed on the way from, um, uh, I met lots of mule pack, mule pack um, party. I think he's a ranger. And they carry the supplies to the ranger station. Yeah. And also, not, not only ranger station there, uh, quite a few places they are repairing or building the trail. Uh, to make it safer. And uh, I'm, it's okay, I'm happy to see it, that they are park service uh, maintaining the trail, but uh, it was sort of a stairway, so easy to go up. And to me, that's not the mountain climbing or to, and so I, I, um, I 
told them, please don't pave the trail. And they laughed, <laughs> they don't, want do, don't do that. Uh, okay, that's on the way, half dome uh, passed between the Yosemite Valley to Torai Meadows. Uh, but half dome is quite a, that, that way, west. And so I didn't go that. Okay, the, these are the trail maintenance crew and the ranger, see how neat trail is. Almost like a bay, bay trail. Um, and th these people are uh, supporting volunteer group. So volunteer group don't need to cook, uh, each one don't need to cook, doesn't need to cook. And so they have the, uh, uh, they eat together. Or cook, someone cooks the whole meal and they eat together. And they invited me to, to, to the breakfast or something. Is it okay? Is it okay? Just, just a minute. Uh, the things to carry uh, are not very much different from the ordinary um, backpacking trip. But these, these days, food should be kept in the bear-proof canteen. And uh, I, now I'll show you the one I used. That's what, that, oh, this is, this is the third, third, third generation canteen. And first one is, I was surprised when I went to the Yosemite Valley Ranger Station, where I got the wilderness permit. They are uh, lending the their canteen, and that's what I bought for the first time. Quite big and heavy, but I decided to to be successful. You have to. Your pack should be light, lightweight. And to make your pack light, you have to spend the money. <laughs> That's, so you have to be prepared to spend the money to make your uh, pack light. Because when we started, I started um, here, uh, many years ago, I think 1960s or 70s, there was a book called Complete Walker. Some people know that. And his attitude is to weigh every item and think of the performance and the weight and you, know, you have to take the balance between that. And uh, this is bear proof means if I kick this and bounce on the rock, it's, it doesn't uh, break. And during the night, you can't keep the, your food inside the tent. So uh, you, have to, you have to keep the food inside. And what I carry, I'll show you inside this one. Very, very few people carry this, probably because of the uh, price. Two, more than $200 just for this. And, but anyway, this is my uh, food. Cliff bars, and cliff bars, and I allocated three, three cliff bars a day. Yes, and so oh, this, this was full, uh, 30 cliff bars, plus dried fruit and dried vegetables. 
you know, old light, lightweight one. And so, uh, do you know what one cliff bar's calorie value is? Anyone? Yes, right. So about 250. Some, some, some are 240. Uh, some are, mm. but anyway, I bought 30. I carried at the start 30, 10 days food. And the ca calorie is seven, 700 calories per day. That's far low for the, for the one person to eat. But I, uh, fortunately, I read a book about Nazi concentration camp. Uh, because at that time, I, I was tutoring the Japanese girl who came to the Bay Area and uh, started going to the uh, uh, mission, mission High. Well, we live on the East Bay. Mission High. And one of the books is, uh, I think, author, author's name is Weasel. And uh, the book title is Night. And how uh, Jewish people uh, were gathered and sent, or well, carried to, I don't know, they didn't know that. And uh, there, there were pictures of Jewish people. And still during the daytime, they were forced to work. And so I thought, wow, what Jewish people could do, I can do it. <laughs> well, Some of them died. What? Some of them died. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, she said some of them dying. So I could be starved to death, but what? But uh, I'm uh, sorry to, I, I don't want to threaten you, but <laughs> during uh, when the World War II ended, I was in, in, uh, in the third grade and there was no food. And we walked, yes. Do we have a question? Um, I just wanted to ask, you didn't take any like dehydrated food and, and, or cook it or anything like, uh, 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 you know, most people that go on those long hikes allow themselves like a half a pound a day of dehydrated food or a pound a day or whatever. So did you have any food in addition to the cliff bars? Nothing. Oh. Just, I, I said, dried cherries and dried uh, beans. They are available at the uh, Trader Joe's. Oh, and not like ramen I, noodles or anything? Yes, yes. What I did was I bought some uh, freeze-dried food. Freeze-dried, yeah. Yes. Uh, I went to REI. I was wearing REI uh, shirt and REI boots and <laughs> so, and then do you know how much it weighs freeze-dried food? It, it's not much different, mm -hmm. almost the same as, as this one. That means I wanted to, I didn't want to carry the uh, pots stoves and, pans. and mm -hmm. pots and pans. And then I, which, which way I should do? And then I decided to rely on this. And so far, I always carry the pan, pots and pans, sometimes frying pans, and the freeze-dried food. That's most uh, books say, carry those. And then, I can't toss the aluminum bag. Freeze-dried food is, uh, uh, is 
in the very sturdy aluminum bag. And that aluminum bag weighs quite a lot. That's what I found. And so, okay, maybe if I can endure concent concentration camp, I can do it. <laughs> and so, but uh, as you, you saw that, I did, it didn't take 10 days. I, I had 10 days food to the next uh, supply station, but it didn't take 10 days, shorter than that, a week or so. So if I want to, I could have eaten more, not four, four, four of this, but I looked back and what I did, see, so what I did, and I found I lost my appetite. And so three bars was okay. I, I didn't want uh, to eat anymore. But one thing happened is I met such a nice group of people and uh, they, they are carrying lots and lots of food. <laughs> and so almost, uh, but not, not very uh, often, but three or four times, they invited me to dinner. And so I had the hearty uh, dinner with, oh, some of uh, two places, the car, uh, car access, there are car accesses. So they have their father, husband, someone deliver the food. And they cook and they, they treated me. <laughs> and so, how, and so uh, instead of, uh, on top of saying thank you, well, I enjoy the dinner very much. Well, this is not much, but, uh, and so I gave some to them. But anyway, uh, that's the hardest part, I think. But now I, I said I lost my appetite, so it doesn't matter. And I kept my own pace very slow, about uh, 8.5 miles a day. Of course, that can be uphill. And so more than one trip to the Mission Peak, just you can imagine. Uh, quite a while higher, yeah, uh, uh, in average. Higher the Mission Peak and down. That's the uh, average uh, hiking I did. So, um, yeah. But most people didn't carry this. Maybe 200 and something. Uh, but uh, to me, that's a lifeline. So I did that, this. Okay. Wow. Well, uh, what? <laughs> well, yes. Uh, this is a wonderful talk. What are you going to do when you're 80? <laughs> yes, uh, I already started thinking, but one thing uh, one thing came up. Your, your stamina or power or whatever, from the 60 you are there, gradually 70, and now I'm 75, oh no, at that time, I'm 76 now, and gradually down, but from then on, how can one tell? Yes, 
that will plummet. So I already started thinking that what I would like to do when I reached 80. If you have a good, good uh, idea, please let me know. <laughs> Sai? Um, yes. Two things I was wondering about as you were talking, because I was curious about how you felt while this was all going on. One of the things is the altitude changed, so did you feel, as you went up more, feel that more? Were you hungrier? And then did you lose weight on this trip because you were really borderline on calories? Yes, yes. Uh, the two things, oh, uh, borderline and then huh? altitude. I never had, had altitude sickness. And when, uh, when I came here uh, at the age of 40 something, late 40s, and Stanford Student Center, oh, I wanted to upgrade my education. And I went to Stanford Graduate School. And then they organized a, a hiking trip to Mount Lyell, oh, Mount Lyell, no. Yeah. Mm. No, 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 no. Oh, Mount, Ly Mount Lyell, yes. And I found uh, you can do it without eating. But without drinking, probably it's a problem. And fortunately, I lost my appetite. So candy bar, it's my duty to eat. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I never thought that I would like to eat more. Yeah. And uh, when I was, I will be 80, I don't know. <laughs> I have a couple of questions when you're ready. Uh, over, over here. Okay. Over here. Uh, one is, do you have cell phone access in case an emergency you fall and hurt your ankle, something like that? And two, when you say the post office will deliver things, yes. is it a regular post office or do they have little boxes like that to prevent the bears from getting it? What, what physically does it look like? Is okay, it two things. Thank you. Uh, What's the first one? Cell phone. Cell phone. I saw only one person who's carrying the uh, uh, solar panel, small one, to keep the, the, the cell phone going. And the second one, the safety. Well, safety. I knew that I can... Uh, I can ask someone if I can yell or something. Not very uh, uh, risky place. Like uh, when I climbed at Mount even Dana, do you know, have you climbed Mount Dana? The top is quite <laughs> And so uh, they chose quite a safe route because that, uh, the Jomia Trail doesn't go on top of, top ridge. Always say, safer. So uh, the, the cell phone I didn't want to carry because that's an extra weight to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, he was asking about the. Um yeah, the, po the, post, the post office. Post of, well. oh. yeah. uh, when, you, when you buy a book, how to make the deposit, deposit uh, resupply, where to send the resupply? Uh, it takes $50 extra plus the uh, mailing fee. And then they deliver to one of the mountain hut where the people are running. And so they store the, my supplies there. And so all I have to do is to stop 
one place I think Jomyo Hat is two or three miles extra uh, we needed to walk but uh, fortunately I lost my appetite so I didn't feel hungry or oh uh, I have no strength to go up uphill I never felt that way Strange? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah I just had a couple of quick questions uh, one was uh, do you think the the safety on the trip in terms of if you had sprained an ankle or something came from the fact that you were passing quite a few other hikers so if you were in trouble they could go get someone to help you and then the second question is uh, did you think there was any danger from wild animals mountain lions and okay. bears and stuff all right my health safety safety plus health and the wild animals the first one when i can meet someone someone can reach for example at least I can survive two or three days. Then, oh, where did I put that? <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Uh, here, Troy Meadows, the rescue party come, comes here. And then from here, rescue party comes here. And here to Bishop, this is the very, I didn't, because the car doesn't reach the, the trail, but these, I don't know which one, these can come here. But these days, if someone knows that, helicopter can come. So I never worried about the safety. And the next one is wild animals. And when I started um, oh, 30 years ago, more than that, backpacking trip in Canadian Rockies. And our first pamphlet I received was, you are in the bear country. So I knew for 30 years of experience how to cope with the bear. How, how to do that? Huh? How to cope with the bear? You're in grizzly country up there. Though. Yes, yes. Yes, so more than 30 years ago, when the moment I saw that, what should I do? The mo most basic thing is you shouldn't carry your uh, cosmetics. Someone that doesn't need that. Um, food inside the tent. So I, that's why I paid $200. Uh, and uh, 30, 30 feet away from my tent. And so uh, when I did uh, uh, Olympic Peninsula in Washington State, while I was staying, uh, during the mid uh, midnight, I was the only one. Thump, 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 around my tent. Thump, 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 thump. Some, some, some. It didn't go away. And so I, fl I put the flashlight on. Go away! <laughs> that, that stopped. So it's, it's up to your determination, I think. Okay. Yes. OK. Um. What did you drink? Did you bring water with you, or how much water did you bring with you? Oh, okay. That's a good question. Water is a lifeline. Next to, next to or almost, almost top of the list for your safety. And what I did, uh, two, there are two, two means. One, carry the water filter. And quite a few people carry the water filter because water filter is bulky and so conspicuous. So you can tell, oh, that guy is carrying a water filter. And, uh, but 
Waiter water filter is far bigger than carrying a small uh, water purifier made in Australia. I don't know, but anyway. So I, I bought that and a five milliliter plastic, five millimeter, uh, anyway. That's Japanese, Japanese uh, utilizes the metric system. Five milliliter water bottle in both uh, pockets of the pack. And one, is, one has five milliliter, one has five milliliter. When I come to the, the well or no, the dripping place, yeah, I didn't draw water from the lake or a running stream. I fill the bottle and put a purifying bottle. And you need to wait to 20 minutes. Okay. And so what I did, I tried to do is one start to, uh, the one bottle and full bottle is always on the other side. And so, uh, well, water bottle, water is very, very, and uh, I did quite a lot of backpacking trips uh, in New Zealand. And you, New Zealand, in Sierra, water is not the problem. Always trickling down from the rock wall. Yeah. And so, uh, there was no problem. That's just a purifying thing. But in New Zealand, that, for example, Milford truck. Um, I lived there for seven years before 60, so I did quite a lot solo, mostly solo. Half solo, but anyway. And in that case, uh, particularly Milford truck is, has the huge amount of rainfall. So the water is running, but all turbid, very uh, sort of um, clay color, mud color. So you have to filter. So I, uh, uh, I saw more people who are depending on water filter. Okay, I have one comment. Uh, the Cliff Bars, uh, I usually get the peanut butter and what? chocolate chip. I usually get the peanut butter and chocolate chip uh, Cliff Bars and they have 250 calories in them. No, and, uh, only three granola bars. Nothing you, at all. No, uh, but that's what I, I usually mm. get that. That's my yeah. favorite. And I, usually, I have three boxes, which are 12 in each box uh, as my uh, emergency stash in case of something. So, <laughs> they're very easy and they last a long time. Yeah. Well, I nibbled that uh, freeze-dried uh, things other than that one. Ooh, okay. Uh, this is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for your talk. I'm wondering, on a daily or a weekly basis when you were not doing this, what do you do to be fit and strong enough to do this? How do you, what kind of workout routine do you have in your normal daily or weekly routine that makes you fit and strong enough to do something like this? Nothing. <laughs> no, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, my feeling is nothing because I'm doing what I want to do every day. Uh, most of it is gardening, but my gardening is probably different from yours. What I did when I came here and I read the book, I went to Palo Alto um, lecture or something, the first is soil, second, third, soil, fourth, to enrich the soil, is the work, job. And so I did that. I dug two feet deep and one, one foot deep soil carried to the uh, uh, patio and dig the rest one foot like this 
and mixed with uh, compost or fertilizer. And before that, I sent samples uh, from my garden and sent to, to sent to some places there, several places, to be tested. And the test result came back. You have to mix this, 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 to and adjust the pH value, uh, nutrition value. Uh, they came back that type of information, and so uh, that that job. Digging, digging, digging. I'm a digger. In the back here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any? any? Yeah. Th th this is quite amazing what you did, and I have three questions. I w I wondered um, how much your pack weighed. Oh. And I wondered whether your family felt as confident about the safety of this trip as you did. And I How want much weight of the pack? Yeah, you want to answer that? What? <laughs> weight, of, weight of the pack is less than 30. Ooh. Oh. Wow. Less than 30 means tent and the, the uh, pad, you know, uh, sleeping bag, water, food, uh, clothing, uh, medicine. Yeah, always, uh, like uh, I said, complete walker. Always uh, absolutely necessary things should be weighed. Mm -hmm. and Third one. The, the, the second one was um, about your family. Did they feel oh, it was family. safe? And the third one was, did you ever, during this entire hike, someday say to yourself, why am I doing this? <laughs> Why, why you? No, sorry? Oh, I want, probably I wanted to challenge. And then High Sierra is my dream, to place myself in the High Sierra. That makes me happy, not happy, Euphoria. happier, happiest, super happy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, I will do it at any cost. And I have complete uh, uh, confidence in Sai, and uh, I, know, I, I knew that she could do it. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm, any, anything she puts her mind to like this, it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is it my turn? Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, I need to show the show the pictures. <laughs> uh, well, we've got about five minutes left, so it's one question. Okay, la, la, is it okay, last? Uh, I have. A, I'm. I am ashamed to say that I. It took me 21 days to do 65 miles of the Charmier Trail when I was in my 20s. But things are so different. And I, there are two questions I have. We drank out of the stream. No Giardia existed. Uh, but I wonder if you ever had a bear uh, roll your... We had to put everything up in trees, and that didn't always work. Uh, and I wonder if a bear ever rolled your canister around. And the other question I had was, we never took a tent um, because we took a plastic tube and a little piece of twine so we could tie it or even kind of lever it over a boulder or something if it rained and we would never otherwise slept out. But I also have to say, there is one big mountain high once you get above 5,000 feet, and I can see why I would never ask myself, why am I here? Because <laughs> there's almost no place I think I would rather be either. So thank you for all your talk. Uh, I would rather die without doing this. Yeah. So danger is nothing. Nothing. I didn't feel any danger uh, so far. Uh, I felt quite safe. Uh, 
Right. Okay. Well, you're you are um, you are a particular person who has spent a lot of time with herself and a lot of time with days of oxygenating and but all all this time with yourself walking these trails. I wonder if you cared to share what kind of thoughts occupy your mind with all this time. I enjoyed the environment. So that gave me such a joy, it feels you don't need to think about what else you need to think about. All the joy uh, flowing into myself. Hilton. So, happy walker. <laughs> Every moment. <laughs> okay, any? Anyway, we've got about two minutes before lunch, and uh, Anne just offered to put all your pictures on the website, so maybe we can do that for people okay, for the pictures. Right. Um, any more? One quick question, two minutes. I took a bicycle trip across country, and one problem I had was uh, raccoons because they are very good with their paws and they could open, they could unzip the panniers. I wonder if the raccoons ever gave you a hard time. Maybe the uh, altitude is too high for the raccoons. And then uh, the other hikers were sort of disappointed not to see bears. They, they would enjoy thrills. Oh, you saw bear? <laughs> But uh, I think uh, I, so far, w uh, other places, I saw goats. Sometimes I saw bear, even, even close to Torine Meadows. But this time, uh, no, I wanted such a thrill, right? <laughs> How to how to fight with the bear. <laughs> <laughs> I have another bear question. Yes. I'm curious about the container, as the woman mentioned there. The bear, true, he cannot get inside your container. No. But doesn't mean he's going to be nice and he's going to give it back to you. Now what? You don't have any food and he's got the container. How do you get it away from him? Well, but this is a lifeline, so... No, even empty, I need that. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, well I, I really want, want to show, toss this and kick and what will happen. But <laughs> it's okay. I don't want to uh, damage the floor, so I won't show you. <laughs> You want to share something with the group? They, are, they are just can't open it. Yeah. Uh, uh, because of these bear canisters, the bears know that they can't get food from the uh, backpackers, so they go down, down at lower elevations and pester the fishermen. Okay, I think lunch is ready, and, and thank you very much.